Welcome to The Lex Factor, a lawfully good podcast where we'll brief you on the business of law so you can build a better practice and capture more billable hours. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Lex Factor. It's your host, Lauren, here. And Brad. I'm going back to Brad. Not not co-host Brad, just and Brad. You have a name. I do, Brad. Own it. Own it? Own it. <clears throat> I am Brad. Deeper. I am Brad. No? No, deeper. No, I can't. Do you like the Barry White? Br- Braddy White. Do Braddy White. Right. Do you know I heard <laughs> I can't do it, but speaking of Barry White, I was watching a, a God, National what? Geographic episode. Where and, is this going? And Barry they White, actually yes. utilized Barry White's song to help to build the species of a certain monkey. And no. yeah, yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, it was very interesting. What? Yeah. It uh an endangered monkey species. They play Barry White, and it's helping to populate more of the, the monkeys. <laughs> now, that's random. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he you brought up Barry White. the most random news. I was, it, was, it was very exciting because they were on the endangered list, and they've been recently removed. I can't remember the oh name God, of uh, the species. but We'll Google it later. Yeah. I'm sure we can find it. Yeah, there absolutely. There shouldn't be too much competition yes, I'm, on the web. I'm Brad. Oh, so, how was that? There go the monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. I don't know if we can air this. <laughs> All right, should we get back to? Yes, the we have we're a here? guest today. We have a guest. We do. No way. Yes. Do you know the guest name? I do. All right, go ahead. So today we are here with Danielle Kiriakos. Oh. Did I mess it up? No, I got no, it. No, you, you got said it right. I'm so going to clap for her. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yes, yes. Yeah, clap. So Danielle is actually our new VP of marketing. Um, four days. Yeah, four days. So this is like your hazing it's or my your initiation. <laughs> <laughs> right. Throwing her right into the podcast. I love it. Was this on your job description? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> I don't recall. <laughs> um, so before we dive in, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, hobbies, Funny, embarrassing stories. Oh gosh, funny, embarrassing story. Oh, I, let's I, start yeah. there. <laughs> no, um, jumping you know, right background, in. Background. Um, I've, I've, you know, always been a marketer. I've worked in marketing, you know, the marketing field for many years, um, and across lots of different industries. So, consumer packaged goods. I've worked in pet food. I've worked in um, batteries and consumer electronics. I've built a licensing division. I've worked in both B two B and B two C. And um, I just love getting into the mind of whoever it is I'm trying to market to. And and, mm-hmm. and figure out what makes them tick, yeah. where how to build a journey, how to find where they are and get to them with whatever message at the right place at the right time. So it's I find that fun. And I, I geek out on <laughs> all the tools that we have today. I'm, I've, you know, been around long enough where we did mostly TV and yeah. radio and billboards. And now you can get so micro precise. And it's like a game. It really mm-hmm. is. It's a fun challenge and mm-hmm. and really see results and, and you know, have fun, fun you know, yeah. what you're doing. And it's rewarding to see yeah. those yeah. results. It's fun. Yeah. You're like, yeah. I figured it out. I yeah. Yeah. the puzzle. Yeah. Right. And you'll get rewarded because, of course, you'll be selling your product more. Exactly. Then. Yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. That is yeah. crazy. Retaining more clients. Mm-hmm. Um, so today, we're actually not talking about marketing. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Embarrassing stories. Do we have those? Um, or are we passing that? Gosh, I, th- yeah, there are probably, probably too many to go <laughs> okay. into the embarrassing stories. But, you know, the other fun fact about me, something I'm really proud of is I'm an uh, adoptive parent of three kids oh, that wow. are adopted internationally. And um, it, it really, you know, has, has deepened my understanding of the world, you mm-hmm. know, that experience of um, my, kid, my kiddos are from Belarus, um, which most people have not all heard of, of. All three of them, yeah. Oh, wow. um, Minsk and Gomel oh. um, are the cities. But, you know, now there's a lot of Belarus in the news. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, I've, you know, I've got that, you know, deeper yeah. understanding of, of where they come from. And, yeah. and just uh, I'm a lucky, lucky person because Were of you able to travel there? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Did they excellent. go back with you at all, ever? Uh, you can't go back there right now. Well, uh, well yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so we you huh. know, traveled over there to, to uh, I've been pick over there twice. Yeah, yeah, pick them up, huh. spend some time over there. Well, are they related? Uh, my twins are. Um, oh, and 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 my son is my you know related to them via adoption. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's fantastic. Cool. Yeah. yeah, I love that. It's really a big heart that allows you to do that. So thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. Mm. I'm the lucky one. Yeah. Um, so today, ironically, we are not talking marketing, though, because you have something else near and dear to your heart and uh, teamwork, team leadership, team building, everything team related, right? Yeah. You know, and Lauren, when you, I was introduced the idea of, of participating on the podcast yesterday, and I kind of chuckled because I, I know you guys have talked a lot about marketing recently on the podcast, and I thought, you know, there's really two things beyond things I do in my personal life with my kiddos and volunteering, but, but the things that I like professionally is I love marketing, like I mentioned, but I also love, you know, leading teams and, and building team engagement, so I, I thought I'd kind of lean in and talk a little bit about that today. I can tell you one thing that 
I always struggle with from a team building perspective is I see a lot of potential in people and it always I always struggle when that individual doesn't see the same potential in themselves, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, that they can do it, but they are blocking themselves from doing it and opening up their eyes that everybody's opinion matters. It doesn't matter salary it doesn't matter title it doesn't matter anything so i always struggle with that do you i totally going off yeah, do you have yeah, some no, advice I, I, yeah i'm nodding my head because you know it, it other people that they work with see it and it frustrates people they work with and often mm. you know you just don't even realize how how much that can impact others that you work around so you know teams can be just two people or it can be a, a large you know a large team and it, it really does make a difference if they work well together and and you know trust is really what it's all about mm -hmm. yeah and it's hard too, like especially if you, you know, whether it's a small team or a big team, you as the manager or the quote unquote leader of that team, you you see so much potential, but it takes a lot of work to get that out of that individual. And, you know, you have your work demands, you have your other team demands, and it's hard to sometimes dedicate the time mm -hmm. too. So mm -hmm. what are your thoughts, Danielle, in a situation like that? How can you really focus on bringing the best out of your team members when you guys are so focused on business goals and other, you know, KPIs that it, actually it, drive the business? It takes work. It, it really, it doesn't just happen organically. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's funny. I come from, you know, a background of being a girly girl. I'd never had the benefit of being in sports when I was younger. Um, but, you know, a lot of it kind of starts with some of the things kids learn on, in, in, in sports. And, you know, there's there's lots of teams, both formal and informal, but, you know, essentially it's, it's two or more people working together. And um, if you think back on on the sports analogies, you know, I, I learned a lot from my kids in soccer, but my husband participated in a lot of sports. I heard a lot from him on a lot of the things he learned. Always reminds me it was a state championship yeah. and all of that. Yes, um, honey, 40 but, years yeah. ago, we know. Um, but it's also, you know, like, you, you get a lot of even movies you watch. You know, my favorite <laughs> is Remember the Titans. There's so many analogies that you can apply from the sports world, you know, to the to the business world. And, you know, no matter what it is, in, in sports, you're trying to win whatever sport you're doing. Um, in business, we all have business goals. Or we should, mm -hmm. yeah. and and you know if the team is aligned and and has a goal and they're all marching towards it together, um, and they all play a part in it. They all you know they, they're it's it's understanding their role on the team and how they leverage that strength. Just like if back to kids playing soccer, you, mm -hmm. you typically only have one goalie at yeah. a time, um, one forward. You know everybody's got their role and they each have to do their role and leverage their strengths yeah. to do their role. It's mm -hmm. the same Can't in the business do it all world, yourself. right? And it's it's you know, valuing and understanding what the other players are doing and how you work better together with them rather than, you know, working by yourself yeah. and not trusting others that you're right. working with on that team. And we had a, um, sorry, Brad, did I cut you off? No, go ahead. Yeah, no, we had a conversation internally a couple of weeks ago that actually really sparked something in me. You know, we were talking to Dan and he said, if I had all the same skill set on this team or the same type of people, I wouldn't need mm -hmm. everybody. Absolutely. And I think a lot of people go into, you know, whether it's hiring or some other project and they think, OK, I need like minded individuals to keep this train moving forward. But at the end of the day, it's about having variety. Absolutely. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. You know, it's it's we all talk a lot about diversity now and it's it's you know, it's important, but it's not just diversity of you know demographics. It's diversity of skill sets and working styles. Um, you know, one of the exercises that, that you know, I've done in the past is, is digging deeper into that. There's a whole industry around um, teamwork and building yeah. effective teams. Building and cultures. Go out, and go, go look at books. Um, Maxwell's Laws of Teamwork, um, Patrick Lencioni, I know I'm butchering his name, um, <laughs> Five Dysfunctions of a Team, right. <laughs> Talking to Strangers, Malcolm Gladwell, Leaders Eat Last, Simon Sinek. There's, there's a whole bunch of books out there, but a lot of them will get into what the elements of great teams are and how you can, you know, kind of find examples of that in your own team and how you can, you know, yeah. learn off learnings of others. Mm -hmm. um, but digging into differences and in diversity, you know, one of the ways that you can find diversity is working styles. So I don't know if you've ever heard of Myers-Briggs or DISC yeah, or absolutely. there's all of those different, um, you know, tools that are out there. And it tells a lot. You can, you know, if you do an assessment of your team, it's a little bit of a risk if you see all of a sudden you've got people that are very like-minded. And that's, that's a, you know, something that can point out, wow, we need, this is a gap mm -hmm. for us. Yeah. If we've all, if mm -hmm. we're all people that are, very data driven and you don't have people that are the big picture folks that then you're going to lose opportunities to look for big things in your in yeah. you know big opportunities right. yeah. in the future so you need diversity on your team of of yeah. strengths and styles and not just you know demographic diversity that, right. that a lot of and i i think you on. made a good point 
it's uh, I agree with everything that you're saying around diversity, all, all, all of that. But you said at the beginning, it takes time. It's it regardless of the team that you've put in place, you as a leader have to put in the effort to cultivate and grow those individuals. And I think, uh, you know, a lot of people struggle with that understanding. I'll go from my past uh, in my obviously IT, right? <laughs> um, we talk about that a lot on the show here, but. IT people do not understand management. They do not understand. They're like siloed. Let me <laughs> hoard the information. The more I know and you don't know makes me Different more styles successful. Of communication. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, not the way. And I remember I published an article in an IT company that said of a manager's time, 90% should be spent with their people and 10% doing individual things that need to be done. Oh my gosh! I was laughed at. People pointed. Like I was. People called me names. Oh, I mean, man. it was horrible. They're like, huh. uh, one person said, "This is trash and makes me throw up when I read it." I was like, "Oh, oh my God, gosh! It was terrible. horrible." Yeah, yeah. But I was trying to get the point across yeah. that it takes it shows time a lot about that culture yeah. to too. Yeah. cultivate and work and get to know your people and help them grow. Yeah, so. I, it's interesting as you as you transition and you go from the role of being an individual contributor to the the role of a leader. It, it's 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 trust in yourself and confidence in yourself but your team's got to learn to trust you that they you've got their back mm -hmm. and then you've got to learn to trust your team that that they can do what they are supposed to do and then you you know you de you, you cultivate develop them mm -hmm. and then you know kind of again have their back and make sure that they're, they're doing work that is geared towards their skill set but also develops them so that's right. a big a big part of it and if you're a really effective team the folks on the team also know the development areas that their peers are working on. And it's not just the leader that works on developing those goals of that team. It's the team yeah. collectively. And that's where you really start mm -hmm. seeing things going because they cheer for each other, just like they're yeah. on that sports field, whether it's soccer or football or volleyball. They're cheering because they know the things that their peers are working on. And that's mm -hmm. when it's it gets really fun. We spend so much of our day with our peers at work. If you think about, a, you know, you're 24 hours in a day and if, if you, yeah. you've got children, a lot of times they're asleep when you're home with them. Mm -hmm. You spend in many days more time with your working, you know, associates than you do with your family. And so you've, it's good to like them and good yeah. to, to, you know, feel that they've got your back. And I think, you know, regardless of the industry, whether it's law or somewhere else, I think a lot of the times the problem is you, you know, you hire people, you hire a team, you bring them on, you put them through your standard onboarding and that's it. There's no maintenance after that. You think, hey, I taught them the mission. I taught them the values. Now just go and do your work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that's really one of the most important areas that's lacking because that's where you, you build retention. That's where you grow people. That's where you build that camaraderie. And, you know, I think that's really where, where people kind of fall off. Yeah, yeah I, I talked a little bit about the, you know, MBTI and DISC and things like that, but there's other exercises that I've had the, you know, privilege of doing um, that are really around how teams work effectively together. Um, one was called high performance collaboration, and that's kind of going past that level of understanding who you are and how you work well with others. It's an iterative process where you go through and you say, here's our goals, and we all agree with that, and then you go deeper and go, what are the things that we, when, you know, what is this team's role for that goals, and how how do we, what are all the tasks that we do? And you kind of go through the process. And one of the things that you identify is what are the gaps? So mm -hmm. maybe you've got a team of 10 people. They all say, here's the things I understand my role on this team to achieve this goal. And then as a group, you get together and go, oh my God, two of the people are doing the exact same thing yeah. or parts of the same thing and didn't even know it. So right. that's pretty inefficient. Yeah. Or there could be somebody on the team that's not doing something that really needs to get done to achieve the goal. And the, the collective group didn't realize that nobody had that ball mm -hmm. that was carrying that task out. So those are, you know, exercises that you can go through together to as a, as a team to really, again, build that high performance and, and get results. And when you do things like that, you can be more profitable and drive more results, but, you know, also improve retention because people are more engaged or having fun. Yeah. Right. And that Happier, leads to more results like and more money for exactly. whatever your company or enterprise. And it really links them to the overall company goal, too. Yeah. They can see how their individual responsibilities and role match with the yeah. overall team, you with matter. the higher team, with the company goals. And, you know, a lot of people get lost in a company. What, what, difference do I make? Yeah. And that will help them with that Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. So Danielle, this may actually be a really good time for you to answer this question because you're new. You've been here for four days. So stepping back, looking big picture, how do you come in in a leadership role and really build that team? How do you put that team leadership, team building 
everything team related into place. Where do you start? I, I think first and foremost, it's stepping back to and observing. So, you know, you can't come in and, you know, like a, a bull going into a china shop going, here's exactly what I'm going to do yeah. and, and take over in my way or the yeah. highway. <laughs> understanding the team, understanding people's strengths, getting to know that because, again, um, you can't work well as a team if you don't leverage the strengths that everybody's bringing and, and you know, getting to know the team a little bit and then bringing them together and, and understanding where, where the gaps might be so that we can, you know, address those and and move together again, you know, mm-hmm. getting that that trust and confidence in, in us as a group. I always think it's positive when you're, you know, I think of that as really, um, you know, bringing the, the team together on the same field, uh, just like you had mentioned, because you could say, oh, I didn't know you were, du- we're duplicating efforts here. So really you have varying levels of the individuals. What you're trying to do is get them all on the same page and then grow collectively. Yep. Yep. And then they can hold each other accountable or cheer each other on. Yep. And it really uh, helps. I can't remember the book, but there was a book that had something similar. It was talking about geese and them all squawking in the same line. Yeah, I think it might have been one of the books you mentioned, but I'm not 100% sure. But you all get that motivation and moving together. Yep. So what about real life examples? You know, our listeners today, what can they do at their firm today, next week to really to, to start to make a difference within their team? Uh, at first, is just assessing the team. Uh, you know, it's it's it, you, there is no one example, Lauren, because there, it, you know, every team is different. And I've I've worked on teams, uh, you know, quite frankly, that didn't have trust. Yeah. And you know, they took us off into the woods, um, and and we did oh. one of those ex- exercises where you do the rope and the fall yeah. and everything oh like goodness. that. And and you know, coming out of that, that that's an extreme example. But it, coming out of it, we were able to laugh. We were able to you know have yeah. some fun experiences together, and and it started to heal. And then I had other teams that we just collected collectively came in and, and, and jived. Um, I've worked in examples where, you know, I, I, one, um, yeah, I, back to the MBTI, I worked with an engineer and our styles were so, so diverse can, yeah. <laughs> and we drove each other crazy. And it wasn't until we went through that exercise that we started to appreciate and really value each other. Mm-hmm. And I then knew how to approach him. And I knew that uh, he was somebody that I needed to provide information to via email before I even had a conversation with him because he needed time to process. And for me, I'd be jumping in and that threatened him that I'd be like, mm-hmm. you know, jumping in with a question. And it was just the way our styles differed. So I think a little bit is, is you know, for other folks kind of jumping in, there's so many books that are out there, but it's just being aware of yeah. differences in the team. And again, it's not just demographic, it's different work styles. Um, you know, what's our team goal? What are we trying to achieve? And get together as a team and, and understand what's everybody's part of that, you know, yeah. how do they achieve that goal? So you can do the big exercises, but just start small. Yeah. One that I really liked at a previous employer, I cannot remember the name of it, but it's colors. You're either red, blue, green, or yellow. I think that's disc. Yeah, I was, okay. I was, but you differ at home and in, in work, yes. most likely, not all the time. Um, outside of my house, I was yellow at home. I think I was more red, like in charge. Um, but it was really helpful at work because we had, <laughs> John's not listening. It's fine. I wear the pants. Um, Uh-oh. But it's not, <laughs> Let me mark that down. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to text John right now and let him know. <laughs> No, but it was cool because we had these foam blocks yes, and we would put yes. our order. We'd have them at our desk. So you would walk up to somebody and you'd be like, okay, he's a red. I know that when I'm talking to him, I need to just get straight to the point. If I'm emailing him, maybe do short and sweet bullet points. I'm red. Just so you know. Are you? <laughs> at work or home? At work, yeah. Okay, I'm talking too much. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> get but to yeah. the point. No, it's Don't. really helpful because you can even just change your communication style and your your it's easier to get a response for them to work together more efficiently, like Danielle said. Mm-hmm. So um, the other thing, sorry, Brad. No, it's okay. So one of the really cool things that I did at a previous employer was an escape room. But your problem solving is a team. And there's so many different ways to, quote unquote, try to find the answer. And it's, it's really cool. I thought about it when you mentioned the woods thing earlier, because you're forced to work together. And like, I don't know if you guys have done an escape room before, but there's literally so many different ways that you can try to find the answer mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, that it's actually super beneficial to have so many different types of people in the room with you. With their and own you approach. really, yeah. It was a really cool. Yeah, experience. and you'll start to see people's personalities differ in times of stress yeah. versus who takes regular, charge, yes. who steps back. And it's a really, it's a really fun exercise yeah. to do with a team because you learn a lot about your peers, yeah. and it's it's you know less risk to do yeah. it in a team, you know, escape room type thing. Yeah. So then you understand that when you are in a business situation, I mean, you've got a big deadline and you got to get those things done. done. You know what they should do is they should actually film 
or record that so you could oh. play it back and say, oh, my gosh, I was that I know. demand. Give me this. <laughs> I need this. Oh, my gosh, I can't believe I approached it that way. That would be a great Sometimes learning tool. Sometimes you just need to be in a different situation. We should build an escape room here. How cool would that, that be? That would be fun. It could they be like a courtroom. Yeah. yeah. Escape yeah. the courtroom. To, to your, your example of filming, um, I once did something at uh, CCL, Center for Creative Leadership, and they put you in scenario playing. And so, you know, I was a marketing person. They said, you're the finance person for the day. And they give, you know, you get on this team of people that you don't know, gave us an exercise and they were filming us. And mm-hmm. at the end of us, they did point out, hey, here's things that you did that ah. it, it mm-hmm. was a, it was a good example to, you know, kind of build your leadership capabilities right. to be aware of things that you may not be aware of yeah. how you approach exactly. challenges. Exactly. Sometimes you just need a little feedback. Yeah. yeah. I, I think through all of this, though, what we're really talking about, whether you use tools like DISC or something else to help you get to know your peers, yep. it's really building that relationship and, and trust and trust because without that you know that time i wouldn't know you're that type of person or i wouldn't have spent that time or i don't trust you so i'm going to come in negative you know it's really those things it's relationships and trust that are so important to, to build these teams i think to be successful and once you start to kind of be aware of it and and think about how it applies um yeah i don't know if, we, if you a tv fan you know ted lasso um if you haven't seen ted lasso it's a, <laughs> it's a series that are out there and there's lots of things that you'll find on linkedin where people will talk about ted lasso's seven rules for leadership and it's kind of a kind of a sports you know analogy, but kind of hokey. But it's 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 it, it, he really is it very subtly leading you know some of the basic rules of, of team leadership in in the series. I have it's, to check that. You out. have to check that one out. Uh, you know, it's just start small, start small, and and you know work you know building that trust, building yeah. that trust, and listening. Listening, listening. Yeah. I think that's something that comes up literally every show that we have is start small, whether it's teamwork, whether it's marketing, whether it's changing your culture, whether it's adopting new software. Like, don't go just all in. It's no matter what your business is, how big the team you're working with, whether it's a small partnership or just a, a large enterprise, building more effective teams can really drive business results. Yeah. And the investment will pay off. It's, again, not just only in hitting those goals, but in better engagement and better engagement than people don't leave and yeah. you don't have to, you know, recruit people and then you've got to learn all Start over again over building again new teams. Again. So it's yeah. it's focusing on it can have big payoffs. All right, Danielle, this was wonderful. I think we should have her again. What do you think, Brad? Abs- every time. Every, every time? Every guest <laughs> This is just the Danielle show? The, Dan- the Danielle show. Maybe the Whoa. Danielle show. What if like we it. put her sh- next time she talks to finance? Oh, there we go. Ooh. Throw her out no, there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be like, spend, 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 guys. No <laughs> <Make a> marketing <laughs> budget. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Make How sure did your the marketing, marketing team- budget grow by 90%? <laughs> That's crazy. I understood the finance person style. <laughs> I love it. Oh, man. All right. Well, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, tell your friends. Anybody. Anybody. Everybody. (laughs) All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Lex Factor, and we'll talk to you next time. Until next time, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to The Lex Factor. Lexicon takes care of business so you can take care of law. Learn how to build a better practice at lexiconservices.com.